Welcome to the Agile Wire. Brought to you by Wisconsin Agility. And we're recording. All right, kick us off, Jeff. All right, we are running a new experiment here on the Agile Wire. So we're going to give you a little behind the music. So Chad Beyer, you know, my new co-host, uh, has done these different Agile parody songs. He's kind of the weird Al Ink Yankovic in the Agile community these days. And uh, we want to talk about why he created these songs, what's the background story on it, give you a little bit of that, play the song, and then give you a little post interview on it, and uh, try some quick little quick uh, episodes here all around Chad's songs. All right, Chad, so the first song we have that we're going to talk about is Best Sprint with My Scrum Team. It's a parody of Mary Jane's Last Dance by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. So tell me about this song. Like, why, why this song? Why these lyrics? How did this come to be? Most of the songs I write, I guess, are sort of based on a lot of my experiences uh, shifting from a very traditional waterfall environment early on in my career and then discovering things like Scrum and Agile along the way. So, I mean, the opening line of the song really says a lot of that, right? The, the opening line is, I grew up in a waterfall org. It takes you through sort of a, a transformation, I guess, uh, without calling it that of doing things traditionally, not finding the results that uh, you're after, you know, living with all the pain inside those organizations, and then discovering Scrum and, uh, and seeing how, you know, seeing the impact it can make. Yeah, and one thing I like about the song is there's, there's definitely an arc to it, right? Like it uh, starts off where it's kind of rough for the team and then things, they start to improve and they start to figure things out. and. I know, Chad, that's not originally how the song started when you first wrote the the lyrics. So maybe like what what were you think what were the first lyrics like and why did you change them? You know, a song is never really done. Like back to relating this to Scrum and the definition of done, like there is no done for a song. You just at at some point you record it. And then whether you continue to perform it live or record it again, like it it can change into the future, but you, you kind of have to commit to it. Just like when a comedian puts out a Netflix special, like those jokes are locked in now for the world to see, and they kind of have to move on to write new jokes. So, all right. So let's talk about the music chat on this one. Let's pivot to that. So a lot of people don't know that you do all the music behind this. Like you're not just going getting some, some, you know, cuts, you're pretty much creating it all on your own. I mean, within limits. So Yes, I'm creating everything. I'm not like going out and buying a audio track and then just singing the lyrics. Um, so if, it's, if if there's guitar, I'm almost always I'm I'm playing the guitar. Um, uh, for this particular song, I I've played the harmonica just like really really briefly in my life. So I actually took like a, I think it took me like two two and a half weeks uh, to learn the harmonica part on this because I didn't really know what I was doing with harmonicas. So I usually cheat on the drums and the bass and things like that. Uh, I'm still creating it, but I'm creating it electronically. I'm not actually mm -hmm. recording live acoustic drums. Although I do have acoustic drums in my house now and I'm learning the drums. So I don't know. We'll see. The maybe in the maybe in the future, I'll be able to record everything, uh, work my way up to that. That's awesome. But yeah, piano, piano and guitar, that's always going to be me playing it. All right, so let's like watch this video now. Let's uh, get, you know, it's been a little bit since we watched it because this one's been out for a while. And uh, maybe we'll come back and we'll talk about a couple of our thoughts uh, after we do that. So enjoy. I grew up in a waterfall org, had an agile mindset. Project schedule tied, had my project team working day and night. Well, I took a course to learn something about a framework called Scrum I've never seen. I wasn't convinced, so we just started sprint, put our work up on the wall and kept inspecting.
having a demo isn't fun Attending all events and inspecting But I still don't have a cross-functional team Oh my, my, oh Scrum, yes You help with my agile process Buy me a book, sing me a song Teach me real Scrum, cause I think I'm doing it wrong Best friend with my Scrum team We're continuously improving Leasing all our increments and re So what are your thoughts after rewatching that video? Um, I don't know. I forgot. Like that was a while ago. That was just over two years ago. But it was so, a fun one. I really enjoyed I, it. You know, I I always try to change my voice to sound somewhat close to the original artist, and so that was that was something I was trying to do. Right, give it a little Tom Petty feel. Yeah, and I think you do a pretty darn good job of that. Like, if you look through all the different videos, like, your voice sounds very different. It's still you, but it's like you're really embracing yeah. the artist. So I, I definitely see that as I look through the different videos. I also realize, you know, the videos I've been putting out lately, right, they're shorts. Mm -hmm. And they're like less than a minute of your time. And even though this is still only two minutes and 44 seconds long, it feels like it takes a long time to watch it. And I feel like a lot of people, like with the YouTube channel, they, they probably like, they start it and then I feel like they click away, right? The stats even show that. So I don't know, that's interesting. Like a full song, it takes a lot of work <laughs> to like put one of these out. And I feel like people, they just wanna see the TikTok version, like, you know, the quick, the quick hit. Yeah, the instant gratification we're used to. Um, but yeah. you know, it, it, it is something to think about, you know, like, I don't know for people that really care and they like the lyrics, it could be something to even open up a retro with, or, um, something they use as a learning tool. Like I, I guess what I see in it, and we see this all the time is that there's an arc there and we see that arc with teams when they start using scrum all the time. It's like, they're trying to do some things and then somewhere between sprint six and sprint 10, like things really start clicking and like they start really getting the value out of the framework and, and you know, something changes. And so I, I feel that in that song and I hear it, you know, cause I, we've seen that so many times. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, I mean, that is our experience with almost every team we've ever encountered. Right. We always talk about that magic that happens somewhere between sprint five and 10. It's like, you've been, you, you're introduced to scrum one through five is like, it's, it's going through the motions. You're just trying to run through sprints, but then after a while, the improvements start to kick in and you really start to make outcomes and impacts. So, um, yeah, like verse two is talking about like having nothing to demo isn't fun. Yeah, it's not yeah, right. Like when teams struggle to get to done early on, it's really painful. And, and a lot of times it's cause you don't have a cross-functional team. You're, you're riddled with all these dependencies, but then when you get to the final verse, it's like, um, you know, the, the final chorus, right? Best sprint with my scrum team. We're continuously improving, releasing all of our increments and removing our impediments. Like it's, it's scrum working for them. So I don't know. Yeah. It, it is a, a nice kind of like lyrical success story, I guess, for a, a scrum team. And we've, we see that again, like we see so many teams go through that. Um, and I think it just, you have to stick with it. And then of course it always helps to have someone, you know, by your side reminding you, like, these are the, these are the, the toughest days, right? The first yeah. one to five sprints, five to 10, that's, um, not to say that everything is solved after that, but. But for at least any you know new it works. Team, you've it, proven it to yourself. You you you've seen the value come out of it. So yeah. there's a less, yeah. little less faith you have to have in the framework. Another lyric I really like is "Buy me a book, sing me a song, teach me real scrum," because I think I'm doing it wrong, <laughs> right? Because like we see that all the time, where where teams are like, "Yeah, we do scrum," and you're like, well, "What does that mean for you?" And you're like, "Yeah, we do daily scrums. Like we get together for 15 minutes every day." And I'm like, "Oh, so what else? Do you, do you have a planning meeting? No, no, we don't really don't do that." Do you release often? No, we don't really do that. Do you get to done often? No, we really don't do that. Do you have a review? No, retro? No, no. 
do you refine work? No, not really. I mean, we kind of do these big requirements meetings and they get handed off to us. So it's like, oh, so you've taken one little piece of the framework and you think you're doing Scrum. And so I think that's a very normal progression or certain pieces you pick and choose, you know, like we don't have this part of it. And so there's a lot of teams out there. And if they do the whole thing for a little while, maybe after that five or so sprints that we were talking about, they really start feeling the value like the song kind of yep. portrays. I like that lyric too. <laughs> it makes me laugh. I guess I know we do. I do try to put as much humor into the lyrics as possible because you got to laugh about this stuff, right? Like yep. changing, changing, uh, changing anything within a, an organization, the larger it is too, you have to just have, have a sense of humor at some point too. And just be like, yeah, this is, these are the struggles, you know? Yeah. I like the humor in the middle where you're like posted notes and like you get into that part. And it's just like, I have this image in my head of like the, you know, the scrum master or the agile coach kind of walking around with their bucket of post-it notes or their backpack of post-it notes and markers and pens. And I don't know, it just yep. maybe our, the stereotype that's out there and, and you just kind of poke fun at it, you know? Yeah. So what do you, what do you think? Is, are we, is this, I think, uh... I think this is good. This is like about what we wanted. We were after, right. Uh, kind of a mini episode here. So yeah, I don't know. It's just an experiment. We want your feedback, um, so that we can hear about what you think about these episodes. Should we do more of them? Should we do less of them? You know, we're okay with uh, killing experiments or, you yeah. know, too. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe, maybe this will be entertaining. Maybe this will be a, a different version of the podcast that people can consume, uh, you know, instead of the, the hour long conversation with a guest. So we're all about experiments. So here we go. Buckle up. If you found value in today's episode, share this with a friend until next time, get agile and stay agile.